on a consistent grind. Road trip six and five, and anything I twist be lying. Hey yo, niggas ain't equipped for mine. When I spit in the crowd, niggas duck like a pistol was fine. Real niggas spit back, and I acknowledge the fact, but I still run through them like a yard on the track. Man, I always stay on the job. Fuck my money, you end up looking like one for a hold. Welcome back to Glue Tube, and this right here is a special delivery. I ain't never, I won't never know Harlem Shake. I'm from VA, man. I don't Harlem Shake. But look, this is a special delivery, as you see by the title, Bar Volume 2, Raising the Bar. This is my second mixtape. I can't say it's my second or even a, an official mixtape. It's just my second mixtape, my second project. As you know, I don't call my projects mixtapes, but back during these times, it was mixtape because it was all industry beats. I think I might have had one or two on this project that weren't industry beats, but for the most part, it was all industry beats. As I get later into writing songs and you know developing my craft a little more, that's when I call them projects because it was like, even if I did use an industry beat, I'm using a song format and you know I'm taking over the beat, making it my own song. So like I say, this is my mixtape. First of all, let's start with the title. The reason I called it Raising the Bar is because the first one was called Setting the Bar. And by my first take, my first mixtape on my first project, Solo, I felt like I was setting the bar, you know, setting the tone for how I was going to do things. It's not conceptually following up from setting the bar, you know, nothing to like. Matter of fact, both of these projects are just songs slapped onto a, a, a project. It's not no kind of concept, no structure or nothing. It's just what I had and what I felt like putting out. For the first two projects, Short Story created a Grinch-like character to represent the Grinch, because that was my name. I was going by VA Grinch. So this character would look like the Grinch so people can get it, but at the same time, we wouldn't have any copyright infringement. This time, instead of using it in the Brady Bunch box theme, as you remember from the first one, he used the Mount Rushmore theme. So you got my face where each president would be on the Mount Rushmore. I thought it was dope. You know, raising the bar, going from Brady Bunch to a president, I think we raised the bar so far. Then you got me sitting in the throne below that was another one of my aliases was VA Tyrant. I felt like I hadn't worked enough to be the king, but I knew I had the skill level to compete with whoever the king was. So I felt like I was VA Tyrant and I was overthrowing him. So cocky and just unnecessary back then, but that's just how I was, you know? And I think that competitive nature fueled my drive, so I wouldn't change it for nothing. Now this project is fully recorded in Richmond, Virginia, except like maybe one or two songs, but the experiences come from Richmond and tire water because I would be in Richmond with my homegirl Tip as she went to school in VCU during the week and on the weekend we would go back down to tire water. Sometimes my cousin would come with me, sometimes my nephew would come with me. I had another dude that used to come with me too. I made a lot of music with him and some of that music is not on this project for particular reasons and I don't even want to speak on that. Like I said, it's a lot of stuff that I just feel like I shouldn't speak on. I'm, I'm not like these other YouTubers. I'm not about to incriminate myself or anybody else so some stuff I just won't speak on but let's just say we don't play that dude's music. And this is 06, 07. There was different stuff going on. Now I don't have to worry about that. I don't hang with people who dibble and dabble in any kind of lifestyle outside of positivity. So I don't gotta worry about who I'm hanging with. The theme for this project, conceptually the songs didn't have a theme. Not, nothing stuck together. There was no, no meaning or message behind this project. But I had my people call and leave voicemail. That's what held the project together. I had the intro with that. I had one before the first female song I ever wrote on that. My homeboy was locked up. I had him call in and do a verse. So that's one of the features also. One of the features was, was Jinx calling to leave a verse. My nephew, Young Goldie, shout out to Goldie. The also Unknown who was locked up and Low Pro. Cause I wanted to put a song that had Un, representing Un up there too, since he was locked up. And so we got a joint that we did back in three or four years before this, this joint came out, probably longer than that. We had a joint that we had, had in the tuck from a long time ago that we put on this, I put on this project. Like I said, I got the four pit bulls, me, Low Pro, Unknown, Prime Killer. Got my nephew, Goldie. And shout out to Jinx. I got Jinx on the joint. As I mentioned, I discarded about two or three records that I had with somebody on this project. And I'm pretty sure somebody has them. Somebody has this full project. But I discarded them. I didn't want to have them. I didn't want to see them, hear them, or had nothing to do with them. Probably should have chopped my verse, but I wasn't thinking about that. But I got 14 tracks right here. One being the intro, one being the interlude. So I'm going to run through these songs right quick and talk about each one as we get to it. I really don't remember whose idea it was to do the voicemails. I want to say it was Short Story because he gave, he gave me a lot of ideas back in the day. No, nobody ever wrote any bars for me, but Short Story gave me a lot of ideas as far as like concepts and putting projects together. 
he executive produced most of the projects that I did. And pretty much anything that he did an album cover for, he executive produced. So as far as the intro, we had people call in and leave voicemails and shout me out or shout out the project. And that's how we intro the project. So I thought it was something different. It was dope and cool just to have something besides just songs on the tape. Yeah, I know that mixtape gonna be crazy, my nigga. I'm chilling with this one. Shout out to my motherfucking people. Now, when I'm listening to this project, I'm seeing what people say they want the old Grinch. I'm hearing all they want to hear is self-incrimination and self-destruction. That's all they want to hear. All they want to hear, because this first record, 40 Bars, is a prime example. I'll take your money. You, you try to take mine, I'm going to blame you. Stupid. It's, it's just stupid, man. Like, it, anyway, man, but there's bars in the joint, though. So the first one is just 40 bars. Open up the, the whole project with just... Just going in, punchlines and punchlines and punchlines and ignorance, <laughs> pure ignorance. She ain't villain, yes, I'm that crook. Pull your work out in front of me and get your pack took. I'm so crooked and foul, call me the black bush. I'm stressing with more problems on my hand than in the math book. The next record is called Come On. Again, more ignorance, but at least this time it's a song. It's pretty much like you're looking for me, come get me. Like I'm not going to run from you. I'm not hiding from you. If you want me, come get me. That's what this song is about. See, it's still ignorant because... You got people out here that's looking for people to come get. You feel me? So, oh, 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 you want me to come get you? And I know how the law of attraction. Oh, man, I just know how it works. So I refrain from these type of these type of records, man. It's just, you know, so name of this record is called Come On. I actually did a video for this. We had a, we had a DVD called uh, Dirty Lens DVD because everything we were recording cannot be displayed on YouTube. It definitely can't get displayed on TikTok. We had to blur a whole lot of stuff out. So yeah, I, you know, I had a video for this on that DVD. Next record is called I'm Not Running. I did this over the game beat. Uh, I forgot the name of his joint, man. Let me play it right quick. That I can't, I don't want to get no copyright infringement on this. YouTube be slaying me with that, but that joint. So it's called I'm Not Running. Once again, just like come on, if you're looking for me, then bring it. I ain't running. More ignorance, but once again, I'm learning how to take this madness and make songs with it, and not just a straight verses, catchy hooks, stuff like that. So I'm learning. You know, I'm learning. And that's a fact. Nowadays it slap me and I clap you back. Ain't nobody trying to go out like a sucker. I buff you. It's the mentality. So I keep a strap with me. My girl hate me token when I know. This next record is called Every Witch Away. Featuring my nephew, Young Goldie. We called him Goldie because he got the two permanents right here. With his neck with his initials on it. So we all we just called him Young Goldie. That was his name. But this record is called Every Witch Away. And once again, this whole project, I'm telling y'all right now, this whole project is ignorant. You've never had a pro I've never had a project with this many gun records. Like, come on, I'm not running. Then every which way. I'ma hit you every which way. Don't make me pull this tool and you know what I mean? Like it's just oh my gosh. Um but yeah, it's it's once again it's a dope record. Like it's catchy hooks. I'm learning how to do catchy hooks. I'm learning how to get people attention and, and keep their attention with the record. Two different sounds, two different styles. My nephew was crazy with the punchlines and yeah, man, we had fun on this record. All these records I had fun on, because I was just an angry dude anyway. So just letting off this rage was fun to me. Don't make me act a fool and put this blicker in your face. Bang. I roll like a field pop and ride like a crackhead. Smoke like a Jamaican into my eye blood shot red. Pussy nigga, you can catch this blood clock, nine glock, red dot on your... Finally, we had my cousin come up to Richmond. He came up there, as soon as he got there, he seen the keyboard, he like, yo, can I make a beat? And he went crazy, man. I, my cousin is my favorite producer, y'all. Me and I am Will got the best chemistry right now, and he's my favorite active producer, but my favorite inactive producer, or my favorite producer, period, is Low Pro, because the beats that he made helped me craft my skill. The dude that I did the Lava Project with, that I'm recording these projects with, he showed me how to write concepts, you know, how to, how to stick to the topics. But just learning how to flow and write punchlines, like, pro beats was just crazy. So we did a record called Go Hard. As soon as he came in, he just, like I say, made the beat, 
We rolled our joints right there, laid the joint down right there. And just me and my cousin on this one. Had fun doing that too. And we had tapes, man. Like we had tapes and tapes. I swear we had like three tapes front to back. Uh, 60 minutes. Some of them, one of them probably 90 minutes. Just music that we lost. So, yeah, me and, me and Pro and I had mad music. We had too much music. Speaking of un, this next freestyle is called Free Un. This isn't so hard. This verse really ain't so hard. This pretty much is just me saying like, yo, I'ma hold it down for until he get home. And that's, you know, ain't nothing too much. Punchline. That's all I was doing back in these days, just punchline. That was my main focus. Not, like I say, not too much schemes, not too much concepts, just punchlines. I'm just getting my bars off. Yo, my cousin Un doing fine. Don't worry, I got my family back. Un is rich like dirty South of Candillac. Brown is in my jeans. I've never been a man to slacks. Even in church, black jeans, I'm not a man for slacks. Same with the tree, B, I'm not a man for slacks. Drop time around, and my soul man demanded that. So I got to get it any way I can. In fact, I'm fluffing up the point eights and saying they granted that. So now... We getting into the first female song that I ever wrote. I got an interlude before that, but it's just an interlude, so I'm not even gonna break that down. It's, you know, young lady left a voicemail and I used it. I didn't ask her to leave a voicemail on this one though. This is one that I didn't ask for. I wanted to make it candy, but this record is called Honey Bun, and this is the first female record that I've ever written. I think I just told y'all that, but I had to say it again. I don't think I cursed in this record either. I lied, but who was I kidding? I had a foul mouth back in the day. I should have been called FM. This record was still dope though. Like it was, it was nice. It was respectful. It won't know raunchy. I never been a. I, I do got one, but I threw that record away too. But I don't got no raunchy records uh, out in public. I don't, I don't. I never felt comfortable when I did make them. I, it's hard listening to them because that's just not me. I respect women. I got three sisters: my mother, my aunts, my cousins, my nieces. Like I, I, I can't just disrespect women like that and feel comfortable about it. So. This is a totally respectful record, Honey Bun. What you wanna do will get it done. Time flies by when you have a fun. Have some fun with me, Honey Bun. What you wanna do will get it done. Time flies by when you chillin' with a gentleman. One that compliments you and makes you feel feminine. And beautiful. Have some fun with me. Next, I told you about the dude that was locked up. I let him get his verse off. He called. Um, once again, this is totally scripted. Every call except for the Honey Bun call was, was scripted. So... Shout out to Jinx. I don't know what you're doing, homie, but if you happen to see this, hope all is well with you. God bless you. Hold your head up, man. Spit some more bars, man. Let the world know about you because you got talent, man. Damn, man. What the fuck this nigga at, man? Pick up your fucking phone anyway. Jazzy Jinx, man. Hit me up, dog. But I got something for you, though. Yo, I tell them, like, yo, niggas do my block. Be rolling. We hustle more while the cops patrolling. I fuck your... The next one is a freestyle. It's a Spots Unknown Radio Freestyle. That's what I call it. It's not a radio station or nothing I did. That's just what we titled it. I think it was some short story I was working on at the time. I went in on the Six Minutes of Death beat by Fabulous and, and Cassidy, I believe. I was dissing somebody. I'm going to keep it a bean. I buried the hatchet, so I don't want to dig it back up. Any any issues that I have with people that I no longer have, I don't want to bring it back up unless I do it with them. So if I can get you know these people on live and we can talk about the past and all of that, then I'll do that. But I don't want to bring it up. I don't want nobody to clip nothing I said and take it back and be like, yo, this what he, you know, I don't, I don't need none of that. So that's why that's how I'm going to refrain from all of that. But I was I was dissing somebody straight up. I ain't gonna lie to you. Street war with me is unaffordably affordable. I, I guess it's best that you boys keep ignoring me. Cause I'm the tyrant, I'm revoking your authority. I rest your boy in your piece of squawk and weep while they cop my TV. I get ratchets for a real small copy. I can drop a yard and get to top rock properly. I make sure This next one is called Keep It Moving. Now this project was not recorded in Richmond. This project was recorded maybe two or three years before. This is the one that I got me, Lil Pro, Unknown, and Prime Killer on. We called it Keep It Moving because no hook. We just kept it moving. And we do got a video for this. This video was also on Dirty Lens DVD. I might find a way to record that and, and, and release it one day. I mean, put it on our laptop and rip it and all of that. So I see how I can work that out. But I, we do got a video for this. Not high quality or nothing. It's just, I actually think we recorded this off the uh, digital camera and edited it on Windows Movie Maker. So. Ain't nothing fancy, but it's still the whole squad together. Rest in peace, Proud Killer. Um, so yeah, man, we got that. But this this joint, this one of my favorite records too, man. Produced by Low Pro, and it's. <laughs> 
this is one of my favorite records, like period, ever, including some of my new stuff. I love this record, and, and probably also it got that nostalgic feeling to nostalgic feeling, and I had my whole squad on it, man. This is my first squad. This is VA Pits, you know, Fam Click. So yeah, man, me and my cousins, low pro, my real cousin, but I know the proud killer, my cousins. Shout out to Chris too, and and grandma Audrey. My grandma named Audrey too, so that's crazy. That's another thing. We both had grandmas named Audrey. That's just keep it moving, man. Pro man, get back in the get back on the keys. Real stop spinning, reflections of the car, ultraviolet rays make the whip glisten. We not stunning, we shitting. The fake niggas wanna brain drama, the niggas might wind up missing. Respect from you is not what I aim to get. Plain and simple. So after recording yet another project in this man house, of course I let him get another solo on this project. He produced this one as well. Dope record, man. I believe in the dude too. He was dope. You know, he, he, he could rap, so I had no problem putting him on my project. He also taught me how to write songs. Before getting with him, it was a whole bunch of freestyles and songs where you could snatch any verse and put it on any song because the hooks were just, I call them general hooks. Pretty much just showed me how to rap about things outside of the street and stick to the topic of the chorus. You know, it's easier for me anyway, when you write the chorus and then stick to that topic because the chorus is the topic. But shout out to him, man, for helping me out with that. That was a major growth, a major growth spurt, growing point for who is to now be Glue Hefner. The final record is called Chicken and Biscuit, and it's about a chick being a female and a biscuit being a gun. And when you go to your chicken spots, you get chicken and biscuit. So it's just kind of like a little wordplay. And the song is about exactly what it's about. This is one of the songs where I actually did stick to the concept, but it's still just street. Everything had to be street with me. I felt like, I felt like that's what people wanted to hear, or that's what they wanted to hear from me. And though some people did, that's not what I needed to be saying. That's not what I needed to be talking about. Whether that was what I was living or not, it's not what I needed to be talking about. It still was a dope record. I like it. I think it's dope. None of the mixing on this project is up to par. But if you're a Glue Hefner fan and you want to hear more of where he came from, then you'll listen. Because I, I listen to it sometimes and just be like, you, you have some bars. I wish you could have constructed those for more positivity. But it is what it is. It's, it's what made me. So I can't, I wouldn't change nothing. I, like I said, I wouldn't change nothing about what I used to write. But it'll happen when it's time. Just never lose your passion for the grind, right? My shorty heart is niggas. She hard as and fuck. turn me on when I hear a revolver spin. My shorty keep tools close by like a dentist. My 38 special to be specific. Out of all of my chicken, she be my favorite one. Cause no matter the situation, baby, y'all would Now, as I'm ending this, I'm recalling another record that I did off of the 50 Cent beat. I believe his was called I Know You Don't Love Me. I also called mine I Know You Don't Love Me. I just mixtape formatted his his song. Because I think his was something like, I know you don't love me, because you ain't the same when Jay-Z you're around. I know you don't love me. Something like that. And I did the same thing. I just put artists from VA. So that's another project I remember. Once again, just punchlines. I ain't really go too super street on that one. It was just a bunch of punchlines and just, I, I somewhat stuck to the topic. Not as much as I could now. Of course, you get better with time, but... Yeah, it was just, that was a dope record too. And that concludes the album breakdown for Bar Volume 2, Raising the Bar, my second project. Like I said, I don't want to call it my official mixtape or official project and all like that. I'm going to just say my second project. Listen to this joint for the past two days. Help me realize how much I changed. I see how much I glue. I mean grew. <laughs> Pun intended. But yeah, man, um, I would never go back to this style of rap, period. I don't care how much money you offer me. I just ain't doing it. I just... I see how, how much of this stuff I manifested too. A lot of this stuff, I can see it. Like, I, I can see that, I can see the whole timeline. I'm like, well, you said it then and then it happened then. It's, it's ridiculous, so no more. I'm waiting to see what this manifests. I'm not actually waiting, I'm still in motion, but it's coming. I'm not even believing no more, I, I just know. When, that's a different story, that's up to him. But you gotta know what's gonna happen. So yeah, man, we up out of here, man. Law of Attraction, gluehefter.com, grab that. Grab the USB, the deluxe joint, and you can get this album I'm talking about right now, this project I'm talking about right now. And other than that, man, I'll see y'all in the next episode. Thank you for episode 40. Oh, we ready to go with no sleep at all. Let's see through my eyes like this. If we all get a piece of the pie and bring it back, we can see it all.